next presenter. So I want to just be, I want, we're going to pass out, can you pass out that one that's right by the computer? Pass out some papers and that you guys can follow along with me and you guys can take notes on, the, on that paper. I am going to use, be using some of Michelle Stone's um, Celestial Education along with my own um, that I've started with a theology tree. So um, we're going to, uh, ju I'm just going to start with, but okay, I want to do Celestial Education, Theology Tree, kind of mesh them together, but go at it in the angle of math. So how many of people absolutely love math? Oh, this is amazing. This is the best group ever. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, so how many people jump for joy when their children say, it's math? Okay, just a few fewer, but all right. I love math too. I have loved it since I was a little girl, and it was only because my fifth grade teacher um, gave us a contest of um, a mathematical formula. In fact, I still remember it. It's not kind of weird. Um, the, it gave me a mathematical equation, and I was the only one in the class that got it right. And he praised me. <laughs> yeah, he praised me, and I said, oh, I must be good at math. So I excelled in math and failed in everything else. But I excelled in math. <laughs> and um, I, so I really do love math. And, but it wasn't until I started um, teaching my own children mathematical formulas and mathematical equations and doing all the math with them that I'm, I really gained my love for math. Because it was, it was after that that I started going, oh, this is really cool. So somebody, I don't watch television, so someone told me there was a commercial, a Sullivan commercial, where the mother is going in and she says, um, her, her son comes in and says, Mom, I really need some help with homework. Can you really help me with homework? And, and he goes, yeah, 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 I can help you with your homework. And he opens up his math book and she goes, ah, no! And she runs outside as fast as she can and she gets to the other side and she says, no, hey, hey, you, 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 Mailman, Mailman, can you help me? My son needs help with his math. <laughs> so some people feel that way. Some people feel that it's really, really scary to do math. <laughs> How many of you guys are scared to do math and don't like it very much? Okay, so there's a few. <laughs> so um, I um, thought that way one time when my son was doing it, and I thought, oh, this is not as easy as I remember. I'm going to have to go there. My brother-in-law came over with his algebra college homework, and he goes, you're really good at math. you got to help me. I'm like, oh, definitely, I could do this. So I sat down with him. I'm like, oh, you know what? I just forgot everything I know. <laughs> I maybe I can't help you after all. So I had to look it up. I had to retrain myself. I had to relearn all of these um, re reasons. He was, do he was doing graphing. And what does the Y equal? And what does the X go? And where does it go? And, and I'm like, you know, I used to be really good at this but I don't remember anymore. <laughs> so I had to retrain myself, and I've retrained myself over the months. But I have come across something amazing, and I'm so excited to share with you guys. So th the first thing I want to tell you, though, is when I um, created the theology tree. Do you guys, who, know, who of you know what the theology tree is? Two, two of you. Teo, can you bring me that poster? I'll just really quickly give you a review. Thank you. <laughs> so I created the theology tree knowing that... Um, that, th that God was in absolutely every subject. And I would buy these curriculums and get these curriculums from other people, and I would say, okay, there's God mentioned in them. Thank you. God was mentioned in them, but God was not present throughout the whole thing. I wanted the influence of the Holy Ghost and the influence of God in every single subject. And I went to several seminars. I went, I, I, you guys, I'm a seminar junkie. I am starving for knowledge. I went on a monthly basis to a homeschool group and learned on a basis to, to learn of this. And there was one time when one presenter showed me a, what she called the science of knowledge. And she showed me this little tree. And I, oh, good idea. Thank you. Um, and I thought, okay, I could go with this. And so I started studying and realizing. So the, the roots down here, and you guys have a picture of it on your paper. The roots of it here are the core principles. These are the doctrines and the principles of the subject that you're learning. And then you have the theology, which is the trunk, which is the main part of it. It's the heart of the tree or the understanding or Jesus Christ and his teachings. And it isn't, it's only through the correct principles and God himself that we receive inspiration and knowledge for all of these other subjects. What we do in public school is we compartmentalize. 
we say, okay, let's do teach geometry, or let's teach um, music, or let's teach art. Instead of saying, let's learn today, and have all of them be a part of each other. And there, there are compartments, and each one of these departments, and you probably can't read them on your things, but each, each subject, like literature, has its own branches. And there, there are powerful branches, like language has its own branches. Science has its own branches. Science, we learn more about their branches than we do literature. Literature has poetry, cultures, drama, biographies, classics, and scriptures. But then you take each one of those and learn their branches. What are the branches of scripture? Well, we know Old Testament, New Testament, Book of Mormon, right? And well, what is the branches of cultures? Do you guys know? It's on your subject. Eastern, Western, that, that could be one. The ones I wrote were types and nursery rhymes. So like you have poetry and, or you know, nursery rhymes comes from different things. Anyway, we could go on a whole bunch. I have written a curriculum for each one of those subjects. And I'm going to be giving two of them away today as in, in our drawings. So I have one just on oceanography, which is one of the sciences. And its oceanography is right here. And oceanography has its own branches. And each of those have their own branches. And if you learn of it as a tree and learn of it as different subjects, it comes alive. And as long as you're putting in the foundation, which are the principles, and you're putting in the scriptures or God and his teachings and the doctrines, then, you, then it becomes alive for you. And my teachings, when I ta start ta teaching my children, it started whoo, blossoming and just growing and becoming giant and big. So that's um, the theology tree. On your, on your paper, if you look on it, um, I have one of your handouts. Oh, no, I do. Okay, so the first thing is the foundations. That's the first thing you have to find in every single subject you teach is you find the foundations. What is, what does God say about it? What do the um, prophets say about it? What is whole learning? What is um, the providential purpose? What is God's purpose for this, this um, thing? Have you guys ever heard of the plan of salvation as, as a game? If you, if you think about the plan of salvation as a game board, so what would be the game board itself? Or or no, no. But the, the, the plan of salvation is put together on a planet. So the geography, right? Geography then is um, the place that the, the, where it takes place, where, it's where, where the earth life takes place, right? And then what about the history? What would that be in a game? If you're playing a game, what would be the history of the game? Yeah, from the, how you got from beginning to the end, right? Okay, so what would be the science? The rules. You got your rules out. You got to follow the rules, right? They're, they're the laws, the natural laws of what um, God gave us and created. We have to follow those natural laws on this earth, like gravity. Um, and so we follow those laws, and that's the science of the plan of salvation or earth life. And so what would be mathematics then? Okay, how many steps you go? Yeah. Time. time, exactly. Mathematics has to do with time. It has to do with the numbers and how many steps. It's the strategy. It's the strategy you use to make life. It's your planning. It's your organization in your life. It's your thought patterns and what you're going to do to create your next step or your next move. And I love that about that. So we can think of it, life as a game board and how moving forward. Um, so that, that's the foundation. You need foundations and everything, then principles. The pr I only wrote a few down. Do you guys know the difference between a doctrine and a principle? Have you, how many of you guys have read um, Elder Bednar's book, um, Increase in Learning? Okay. So um, in doctrines, there are only a few. In the doctrines, there's, only, there's just the ones that come from the prophet and come from... Uh, scriptures, and that's the only places that they're found, and there's just a few of them. Principles, giant, there's a lot of them. Principles can be found in everything and anything, and there can be like 20 of them for one doctrine. But then you have the application. We'll go into that a little bit later. So the principles that I wrote down just for theology itself would be that God is all-knowing, God is all-present, and God is all-powerful, and that he has his hands in everything, in absolutely everything we do in our life. Yes?
that, oh, that's a good question. The theology. So in the principles, uh, I mean, the, yeah, I just put doctrine of theology, right? So the doctrine, the theology itself has um, had the principles that God is almighty, all powerful, all wonderful. And then you've got, and I just explained the, the tree itself. You've also got the nourishment, which is the revelation and the reasoning, or the ask, seeking, and knocking. And then we just went through the branches. I love these. I want you just, you guys can just read them yourself. But I love the messages that actual, the actual subjects give. My favorite probably is art, the visual record of his story, the beauty or the attributes of God. Um, math is one of, another one. Math is the reve reveals the true nature of God in his character. How many of you guys have studied um, math and compared it to the principles or characters or attributes of God? Two of you. Okay. That's the way math could be taught. It's powerful. If you think, well, I'll go into it a little bit later too, but the principle of God is a God of order. And then you teach all of the characters in which the, the, the math is in order. And God is all unchangeable. How is math unchangeable? So those are kind of things. And I'm going to give you some um, quick and easy ways to learn things like that. And then you have the timeline, which in the timeline, which is, of course, the, the whole plan of salvation from pre-earth life to celestial glory. All right, so what, ma what lies have you heard about math? Hard. It's hard. <laughs> what else? Okay. Boys are better than girls. Oh, that's a good one. I hadn't thought about that one. Yeah. That's Yeah. Yep. It's all oh, the engineers are the man. The girls could never think that mathematical. Yeah. Okay, what's another lie? Boring. Boring. Yeah, it's boring. Can you guys boring? Have you how many guys have done Lambert's Lament? Have you guys read that? Oh, it is so good. So there, there's a story, and he's a, he's a musician, and he's, he's singing and, and loving music, and he goes to sleep one night, and he has a nightmare. And in his nightmare, he wakes up, and he discovers that music has now been turned into a classroom where you have to sit, and you have to draw out the notes, and you have to put the notes in the right places, and then you have to get the right answer because it has to for, follow an exact, exact um, note pattern, and whether you have to know the exact things. And... So he, he goes and he wakes up from this dream and he's like, this is, this is awful. This is not music. Music is playing. Music is having fun. Music is doing things. Music is creating your own tunes. It's not drawing out little pieces of notes on a piece of paper. And he realized that that's what math has become. If you go back into the ancient times, math is drawing. Math is an art. Math is beautiful and fun. How many times did your teacher say, stop doodling on that paper and get busy? Well, what is doodling? Doodling is math. It's a pattern. It's drawing. It's creating. It's doing something with your hands. It's creating the different things. So I want to teach you a few things that I have learned. I guess I'll do it on this board. So I don't have a marker. First, I want to teach you the pattern of learning. And this is what got, this has got me so interested in teaching about learning, teaching people that they can be intelligent, that they can be smart. So the very first one, and I do not believe you guys have this on your paper. So the first thing we do is we learn knowledge. Now, knowledge is anything. Knowledge is just information given to us. So in a math class, it's the how to do one plus one or how to do an equation, or how to find out or plot on a graph these um, areas, right? So it's the knowledge given to us or the information given to us. Now the second step of learning is understanding. Now understanding is powerful. I challenge you guys to go home and look up the word understanding in the scriptures. Every time you'll find the word heart next to it. Understanding is a heart. Um, so if you um, teach somebody, I can throw all my information and all my knowledge towards you. I'm, Aah! is she learning it? Is she going to get it? No, only, a teacher's only job, only job 
is to share the information that you have. But you cannot get it into their hearts. A teacher teaches unto the people's hearts. And the learner, through the power of the Holy Ghost, brings it into the heart. The teacher teaches unto the heart. The learner brings it into the heart. And only through the power of the Holy Ghost. So in understanding, you have to have heart. And you have to have the Holy Ghost. So every time, and I love teaching this to my children. Did you feel the spirit today? Good. Did you feel, did, I asked my children, do they feel the spirit today? No, no, I don't think I so. I did. Well, what did you learn in school today? What did you learn today? Oh, I learned da, 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 da. Then you felt the spirit. Because every time you learn something new, you feel the spirit. Every time. Now, just a clarification. Can you learn something bad? Yeah. Okay, there's good knowledge and bad knowledge. So we got to learn to clarify which not what kind of knowledge we're going to take into our hearts. All right, the third step. Oh, I can't think of the word. Hold on. Okay, wrong bit. It's called intelligence. Now, there's two types of intelligence. The intelligence of, you know, in the, the intelligence is that we were created from to become spirits and brought to the earth. But there's also the intelligence. And every time, if you look it up in the scriptures, intelligence is actually an action or an application. of your understanding. Okay, so in, um, I wish I would have brought my scriptures with me. <sighs> yeah, if I had a smartphone. <laughs> so um, I, I don't remember the reference, otherwise I would take you up on the offer. Uh, any, one of the, the scriptures says, you know, we, we say it as we interpret it, teach your children to do what is right or teach your children and they will um, grow in training, some of you guys help me. Anyway, it doesn't say... Say it again. Say it louder. Okay, that's one of them, but that's not the scripture I'm thinking. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. Well, oh, that's not the one either, I guess. Well, it's in the Doctrine and Covenants. That one's the one in Isaiah. But in the Doctrine and Covenants, it says, teach your children, um, yeah, light and truth, and things like that. Anyway, it doesn't say the word teach. If you go back, it says the parents should un teach, should, um, teach the children to understand that doctrine. Okay? So it's not just teaching them and sharing with them. You've got to teach your children to understand to receive the information, to fill the Holy Ghost, and to have that brought into their body so that they can learn. And then it is their job to apply that and to create that into the action. Your job is to teach them understanding, not just teach them knowledge. I thought that was really powerful when I learned that. Um, okay, so that's the three... Um, the three, this is, these are the three steps of learning, the three steps of knowledge and, and gaining and gaining information. That's actually how you learn. And this is how you learn in everything. Everything is learned this way. So in the theology tree, you can look at it this way as well. You're gaining knowledge or you're gaining information from the, the roots. And then as you're gaining knowledge, you're going up into the trunk and gaining understanding. That's where the heart is. That's why I put a heart there. You're gaining understanding and heart. And then you can flourish and grow into your actions. Where is the fruit grown on a, on a, in a tree? On the branches. What are the results? The fruit is actually the result of what you've planted. If you plant a good seed, you get a good fruit. If it grows and if you nourish it. If you, have, if you nourish it with the right kinds of knowledge, true understanding. And then you apply it and then you receive you have your results. Your life is your results. Your life is your gift back to Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's apply this to math. Oh, this is so good. I'm, I, just, I really like math. 
All right, so if you have, in life, we have this thing, what we all know is called secular math. And that's what we do in schools. That's what we do in our workbooks. That's what we do in our homeschool. That's what we do, the one plus one. That's the equations. That's the drawing. That's the graphing. That's everything that we are learning, okay? That's the knowledge. Then the second kind of math is called symbolic math. And that's where I'm going to teach you some things in just a few minutes. Symbolic math is what are you teaching? Why are you teaching it? And what is it, what is it good for? What is symbolic um, sim symbolism of the numbers? What's the symbolism of the shapes? Why, why do they create them that way? What was the, what was the recognition and the number of things? And the last one is um, sacred. And this is all from ancient times, okay? This is ancient times. So sec uh, sacred math is the actually, and this is what I love, it's the application of what you've learned through your symbolic and your, and your secular math. So it follows this exact pattern. Your knowledge, your understanding, and your intelligence, or the application of this. So when you've got these three together, we only focus on here. Most people, most of the world today focuses on only the secular math. Let's start going back into the symbolic and the sacred. And the sacred, if you just know that that's the, that, that is the application of math. So let's go into, and if you guys want to get a clear piece of paper out, I want to teach you some symbolisms of math. Okay, if you were to be resurrected, going to heaven, and he says, okay, now go out and create a world. And you're like, all right, it's my turn. I'm going to create it with this way. It's not going to have this. It's not going to have this. It's going to have this. It's going to have this. What would be your very first step? A shape? Okay. Yes. Make a plan. Yes, you need a plan. Yes. Absolutely, you would. Very good. <laughs> yes, you would. <laughs> Yes. So the very first step in creating a universe is a point. It's just a point. Now think about geometry. You guys have all taken geometry, I'm sure. What was the very first thing you learned in geometry? There's a point. So well, that's the second step. But the first step is a point, right? You have a point. <laughs> the first, and, and they don't define them. They, there's three things in the geometry that is always kind of like understood, and they're not very defined. But that's a point, a line, and a plane. So your first, you know, one dimension, two dimension, three dimension kind of things. So the first thing is a point. Now, a point in ancient mathematics, symbol, the symbol for the point, oh, yeah, that's not a perfect circle. And it's not even in the middle, so pretend that's the middle. Erase that one. <laughs> okay, so it's a circle. Pretend it's beautiful and symmetrical and even. Because in, in, in mathematics, they use the compass a lot. In fact, they, there's sacred meanings to all of the, all of the e tools that you use in mathematics. There's this, the compass, the pencil, and the straight ruler. That's all they used in ancient math. And there's symbolic meanings to all, each one of those as well. But let's just say the circle. My son, Mateo, talked about the circle. I teach this a lot with my kids. So um, what does, what's the symbol of a circle? Eternal, forever. Give me some others. OK. Others? Unity. Good. We're getting there. OK. What did Teo mistake? Whoop. What did Mateo say a circle was? What he, what he was calling it? Endless learning. Okay, what else did he say? When he's doing a cartwheel, what did he say about it? Action. Moving, action. Uh, Continual, good. There's, there's another one that he, he used, and he called it a cycle. Can you see cycles in circles? 
Okay. I think that's enough. Do you, can you see where you can take each one of these words and teach from just one word? Now let's talk about this circle. It starts with a point, and that very center, that very point, equally and all sides at the exact same time grows into magnitude. So it's equal. It doesn't come out just a little bit here and then a little bit here and a little bit there, but it's equal in everything. So we're going to put equal as well. Now, if you were to look at these, could you um, name me someone who has all of these qualities? Christ. This is a symbol for God the Father. Because he is eternal. He is forever. He is continually. He gives us cycles or a plan. He is equal in everything that he judges us with. He's forever, never ending, and he creates unity. Is that powerful? And there are circles in everything that we do. So uh, cycles, and we can create this in, oh, this is so fun. Like, oh, did you see a cycle in that? Can you see a cycle in this? That represents the number one. If it's a cycle, it's number one. Because God is continual, it creates a cycle. So when you're teaching, oh, the, um, the water cycle. I'm teaching the water cycle. We're going with the water and the evaporation, condensation. You're teaching this little song. And the little kids say, or you can just say, did you know that that represents the number one? And what's the number one? By this time, you would, they would say, it's God. God created the plan for us. God created those cycles for us so that we can live on this earth. That's power. All right, so the number two. What's the second one in geometry? A straight line. So it goes from the center of the circle to the outside of the, the circle. And it also has a circle around it. And this is the representation of the number two. Have you ever seen this symbol before? You? OK, tell, tell us about it. Teach it me. Out of the mouth of babes. <laughs> wow, where did you learn that from? Um, I learned that in one of our curriculum books. Which curriculum book? Um, I believe it was grade six, probably seven. Six. Good for them. This is ancient math that we're learning here, and good for them for teaching you that. I am very impressed, very impressed. So what did he say? Differences. Okay, what else? Did you say similarities? Okay, what else? Yes, I thought of that too. A Venn diagram is any time you overlap something, so something is connected to another thing. Connection, good. What about separation? Yeah. Okay, give me another one. Yes. Yeah, good. Good. Yes, there's a crossover, yeah. So you have, you could say this was black, this is white, and this was gray then, right? So, like, um, I don't know, black, white, gray. And, and, and then a mixture, yeah. Okay, so, so do, do you guys get an idea of what that could represent? What's the symbolism then? Opposition. Okay, the symbolism for number two, so this is number one. Number two then is opposites. The principle of opposites. Now let's take this to an eternal perspective. God the Father is whole and unity and decided, and the devil decided to leave the presence of God and go. So you could say this is light and this is shadow. This is good, this is evil. This is 
perfection. This is imperfection. Do you see the shadow, the difference? Our lives are built around polarity. And that's the principle the opposites show. The principle of polarity. This is the principle of unity. Now, is that circle pulling away from the other circle? Oh, yes, sorry. So what does the the almond shape. We're going to get there. Yeah, we'll get there. So is this circle pulling away? Go ahead. Oh, see? So good. Yes. You will see this in a lot more things. Now that your eyes have been opened to it, you're going to see it everywhere. It looks, it's going to be amazing. Cell division is definitely one of them, where we have one, and now we're creating two. It's a, it's a pulling away. Yes. It's creation. This is exactly what it is. It's creation. We could not have creation without a male and a female. We cannot have creation without the, um, what do you call it, the stema and the ovum or something, whatever, of a plant. You can't. You have to have opposites. There's opposites in everything we have because we have to have the polarity. And that's the principle of polarity. So this circle is both pulling away from the circle and this line is unifying it to it. So it is both pulling away and trying to come back. Do you ever feel that way inside? Do you ever feel like, oh, I'm getting better, I'm getting independent, and like, oh man, I so want to get to have somebody have a, give me a hug or somebody, and you want to give that, a, you know, or go out and be, I can do this, and I'm all Magnus, and, and then, oh, I feel so sick and so sad and so depressed and so forlorn. Do you guys feel those feelings? <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. So those are the feelings we struggle with in our own selves. It is natural, and it is okay. Yeah, it's okay. Because that's how God created us. God created us with both of those kinds of feelings and both the, the polarities, the, the, the um, principle of polarity. So it's pulling away in things. Okay, so this shape right here it's called the almond. If you look, if you are to study, if you were to look at a leaf, Inside of the leaf, there are these little things called mouths, or what, they're, they're called something more technical, I can't remember right now, but that's exactly what they look like. They are two cells. There's one cell here and one cell here, and these two cells are open and shut. So if it's sunlight, if it's uh, sunlight, they open up, they suck in the sunlight, and if it's dark, they close. So that is a creation of life. They're sucking in God's light, or they're shutting out the darkness. So it's just like the creation. If, you, if we continue on to going on to number three, number four, number five, all of the shapes will be found within there. Within those two pieces, all shapes are created. This is the shape of creation. Okay, so did you learn something new? How many learned somebody new? All right, good. That's what I wanted. I wanted you guys to learn something new. Was it fun? Okay, yes. The two circles together. 